You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, on the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's The Pauly D Project After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424. 256 1729. That's 424 256 1729. And now, another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's The Polly D Project After Show. Here we go. There we go. I'm gonna be like Polly. <laughs> if you have a good time. <laughs> Still should be our Woo! life. My life. Don't be jealous. I know, right? <laughs> Welcome. I'm to... trying to include everyone. The song is my life. I know, because you're singing about yourself. Uh, no. <laughs> Introduce <to> everyone. <laughs> anyway, Bing is for doing, and today we are doing another episode of After Buzz TV Poly D Project, episode 11, Divas, Diamonds, and Beep. <laughs> <laughs> Fill in the blanks. I'm Jessica King. Tweet at us. Tweet at me. I am Jessica King. And introduce yourselves. <laughs> I'll, I'll let the I'll let the regular host start. Oh, thanks. Gabrielle underscore Loren on Twitter. Sassy Gabby. Sassy Gabby. And taking the place of uh, Kevin K. Wow Undergaro yet again is Phil the Thrill yeah. Street Tech. I haven't seen that guy for like years. <laughs> <laughs> is he still here? I think I think ever since we met um, the actual crew, yeah, he's he's had their numbers. <laughs> he had he's his probably Phil. Well, he's probably partying out with them and yeah. being like, yeah, the I don't want to be the is there. <laughs> Phil is here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, I. Really enjoyed tonight's episode. I thought it was kind of funny and it kind of sweet, a little mixture of both. It was kind of nice. I actually really liked it because the entire time we're waiting to see the proposal. Yeah. And for, I think this was probably one of the first times that happened where you're waiting for something to happen yeah. in the story. There's line. something to expect. Exactly. You know, or and like, you and I, Gabby, it. were talking about. We kept making little comments about how sweet Biggie is and just seeing his anticipation throughout the episode. Phil, why are you laughing? Because it's sweet. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's sweet. That's Bill, why. Would, would you propose like that? Would you put a lot of thought into your proposal to somebody? I would hope so. Yeah, I hope so too. I'd, I'd mess it up, but I would hope that I would at least try. <laughs> well, I'm glad you already have lowered your the expectations <laughs> of your future proposal. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So anyway, the boys are Puerto Rico bound. Last week, you know, the episode ended with the phone call that Polly was going to open for Britney in Puerto Rico, bring all the guys, and Biggie has MJ meeting up with them, and it also just so happens to be Jerry's birthday. So um, the guys are just playing around. They go to Condom World um, <laughs> to buy toys for Jerry to embarrass him, basically. And uh, what was what was the vibrator that the girl was recommending? Oh, it was like the the rabbit or something? Yeah. Is that a good vibrator? A apparently. I'm saying I think it is because when I was in Arizona like a month ago, we went into a sex shop and like the woman kept saying like the rabbit and like I have friends that have that vibrator too. So I just think it's like obviously popular and it's weird because it was in Puerto Rico too. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, that was interesting. World travels fast if we get vibrators. I love yeah. how they go to Puerto Rico, like halfway across the country, and they they find a sex shop to go to. That was interesting. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> oh, I thought it was. I definitely thought it was a lot of fun. I mean, Polly, Polly, and Ryan. You know, they had. They just again, they were like little kids picking. Yeah. Up, you know, just Ryan's pulling arms these pranks. Were full. <laughs> <laughs> they were, but I all it for good fun. I feel like. And yeah, it was a good episode. And you yeah. know what, what? What made it good was that was that Jerry was actually a good sport about it at the end of the day. Yeah, I love that he did what he did. So yeah, the boys <laughs> basically told Jerry. 
first off, there's a random wheelchair in their hotel room. Not sure where that came from. The guys tell Jerry that um, they pretty much dare him to ride around in the wheelchair naked. And they say that if he does it, they will not make fun of him for a year. Although Biggie has his fingers crossed, so that was, he's just that was kidding. funny. That showed like a devious side to Biggie of like, oh, don't worry, bro, I got my fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. Yeah, remember when you were was. like twelve and you always used to be like, fingers crossed. Well, if any, if he actually believed that they were gonna stop harassing him, yeah. then he's stupid. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because they're just, they're all friends. It's never gonna yeah. stop. It's I think Biggie was saving stop. face. Yeah. He well, was. even Polly was like, a year? <laughs> like that's a long time. Uh, but Jerry was a sport. I mean, he didn't really have to think twice about it. He kind of just stripped down and jumped in the chair, and he was good to go. Well, was that even, like, part of the plan? What was the birthday suit, being naked, or yeah. was it actually birthday an outfit? suit, like, your birthday suit is what you were born in. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so you're naked. I've never heard that before, <laughs> that analogy. Yeah, it's, uh... Is that a common thing people say? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Is that a common thing people do? Yeah, on their birthday? Yeah. Seriously? I don't know about the doing, <laughs> That's but I've heard it said a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so <laughs> to make things worse, like we said, Jerry was a huge sport and um they go out into the they make him go down to the lobby. That's part of the dare that he has to go into the lobby and they shower him with all of their sex toys that they bought. So he has to wear these glasses with like these penis nose glasses. <laughs> Which, by the way, I went to a bachelorette party a couple weeks ago. My friend had to wear them and she was so embarrassed. But um <laughs> Where did she wear them to? She had to wear them out to dinner. Because oh, really? we played that's bachelorette funny. party games and the losers had to pick from the loser bag and it was like um that's fun you just pick out of a bag so one girl had to wear the glasses oh with the penis nose another girl had to wear like a giant penis headband on her head and um another one had to wear like a bib like a blowjob bib but it was only for <laughs> dinner they had to wear the whole night so yeah for dinner and then after like drinking at dinner we were a little more lenient and didn't make them go to the club with it on but oh that's nice <laughs> of you <laughs> yeah we wanted to let them have some good pictures for the night um so yeah they're putting the glasses on what was that stuff that they were putting on his chest the whipped cream lube. stuff or like oh. that kind of stuff right it wasn't lubricant okay. i thought they said it was lubricant lube? oh, yeah, i'm sure okay. there was lube it was kind of greasy stuff. looking and like it looked <laughs> Wait, like phil goes was his hand glued to him <laughs> isn't that what you said no because jerry said i you know i've got one hand on my you know dick <laughs> and then I was like, oh, did they... Did they glue his hand there? I mean, no, if they're, if they're spraying the stuff on him, then who knows, maybe... You know, maybe that'd be pretty messed no. up. Because okay, so then you get this <laughs> glue like on you. Super glued to him. <laughs> no, because then like you get this glue on you, and you're trying to hide your, for lack of a better term, weenus. And so you go to grab it, and therefore then, oh crap, you get your what hand you know? stuck on your weenus. And we should say pen fifteen. Pen 15. Do you guys remember pen 15? that? No. It was like a joke when you were younger. You'd write pen 15 on somebody oh, or tell yeah. someone to write pen 15 and it spells. You know, yeah. You know. That's that's funny. Yeah. Um. So they go down to the lobby. They take the elevator and then the guys leave him and he's stuck of out in the lobby. Of course they do. What did he think yeah. was going to happen? Did he really think that it was just going to be like a fun stroll and then everyone goes back and has a laugh? Um, so what was he saying? He's like, hi, I'm from the U.S. Yeah, he's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which makes us look even dumber than yeah. we are. <laughs> I mean, at least he Poor was dumb. like, he went along with it. The I girl been, was into it. Yeah. That's why she wouldn't go into the elevator with him. <laughs> well, yeah, I but, mean, would you? With a naked no, guy? No, not that's at all. Weird. Not at all. Yeah. Um, the funny thing that stood out to me about Jerry is that, you know, obviously that was a very bold move uh, to be naked in a foreign country in a wheelchair in a hotel. And he was like such a sport about it, but he kept covering his penis. Like he kept holding himself. Pen at, 15. Yeah, his pen 15. So it's like, obviously these guys have already seen everything there is to see. And every time he would get up, he would just be like, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know. That was I thought it was really it was really funny this whole episode and I personally love that he's so outgoing and can do anything yeah. and he's so comfortable in his own skin. Well, he probably is like even more comfortable now with so much how much weight he's lost, so he's probably like screw it. I'm getting naked. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> awesome. I don't care how skinny or fat I was, like I wouldn't be able to do that like in a hotel lobby. You yeah. know, it is That's crazy. Some this is going to sound weird. I know. But there's some dudes when they get drunk, they just get naked. Yeah. It's actually true. That doesn't sound really? weird at all. With just their friends? 
No, I have and friends not- from college that just felt the need. <laughs> yeah, like you just get, yeah. That's so weird. What goes on in like a man's head? That's what I want to know. Enlighten us, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> what uh-uh. is going through your head when you guys just decide, mm, one uh, shot, two shots, I'm going to take my I'm shirt off. I'm drunk and I want to be naked. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I had a friend like that. I'm not even going to go there. But dude just, I mean, literally got wasted and then just streaking. Yeah. That is it, so it's, funny. It's the old school thing, like, right? We're going streak the Will, Will Ferrell thing. We're going streaking the quad. It's just a dude thing. Yeah. It's, I don't it know. It definitely just, must it's just a manly thing. thing it just makes you look I've so much cooler. I've never felt that need. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a friend, though, that still does that, and he's not in college anymore. So that's Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> interesting on his part, and he always has to wake up to the stories like, Hey man, so you were butt naked last night, and he's like, "Oh, damn!" Wow. <laughs> so he just blacks out and does those yeah, things all the time. That's interesting. And he just brushes it off the next day. But anyway, Phil, I thought you'd be really proud of me. Um, I bought a CD the other day. Was it a Britney Spears one? No, it was oh. actually a Michael Bublé one. Uh, and I went to Amazon, but guess how I got there? Through AfterBuzz TV. I did. I went to AfterBuzz TV and I clicked the little link and I was looking for Michael Bublé's original original CD because I was looking for a specific song, and I bought it. There Good job, go. AfterBuzz TV points. Woo! So what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that if you want to shop on Amazon, <laughs> that you instead of going to the website directly, you should just go to our website, AfterBuzz TV, first, and then on the right side, you'll see a little link to Amazon, and you should just click on it and shop through there because it really helps us out. It does. And that's that. Nice. So anyway, back to the show. Next, we see. Well, finally, Mary Jane comes. Yes. Um, I guess they went a couple days before her. So it's kind of nice. I mentioned to Gabby that when um, Biggie picked her up from the airport, she was smiling. And she's like, I'm so excited to be here. And that's like the first time we've seen her like mm. actually looking happy and enjoying herself. Wait, we're going to talk about her or No, Brittany? no, no. I'm right. talking about her. But I mean, talking about Brittany. But at this point in the episode, she's introduced as part of the trip so um all the boys are getting ready for this concert they have uh check time what do you call it whatever oh sound check sound Sound check check. yeah so mj stays behind but this is like the big concert like paulie is it's like the time of his life here's what i felt i felt (laughs) uh i felt him and Brittany met before because if you notice like he you know it was i mean obviously you know he was trying to play off like he's very humble and he was i'm sure you know paulie's that genuine but it seemed like they knew each other. Like, hey, Brittany, hey, um, thanks for having me here. Oh, no problem. You yeah, know, as opposed very, to like, oh my God, this it's Britney Spears. It was a very awkward exchange, but I feel like Britney Spears is a very awkward person. I agree with Jess. <laughs> because, you know, I've seen her even just in interviews and talking different promos and stuff, and she's never like hi it's Britney, you know? bitch. It's, yeah yeah didn't it change so much i remember when she was so much younger and like bubbly and excited about things mm-hmm. and now it's like she's scared and nervous when yeah. she's on camera it's weird well i feel like she probably is always having to watch what she's gonna say Maybe you know and like her fiance is an agent and he's probably very mindful of that as well like what she's putting out there and the person that she is being in, in the public eye so i feel like she's just always aware and just she's lost that spunk yeah you know? i just feel like she's not relaxing i mean even i mean okay working for e we had a video up online for e news now that was um introducing the x factor judges which is now mm-hmm. Brittany and demi lovato and in that clip She's speaking on camera on the mic to the audience, you know, introducing herself as being one of the new judges. She seemed so nervous. Her voice was shaking. Do you know the clip yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, and wow. she was, was like very generic. That. Like, I'm so excited to find the next star. You know, it wasn't like. But her voice was like shaking when yeah. she said that. It was very. It was like she had stage fright. I've never seen her this bad before. Yeah. I, you know, obviously I'm a Britney fan, but I have a friend who's like diehard Britney fan since the day he was born. And like we watched the whole. DJ Jesse? Another friend. (laughs) Him too. But we watched, you know, every interview, every performance leading up to this tour. And my friend was just so disappointed. And he always will defend Britney until the day he dies. And he was just finally just like, 
I don't know what to say. I can't even defend her right now. So, I mean, she's definitely been through a lot and she's had her ups and downs, but yeah. at least she's making her come back. But well, here, here's what I will say about the Britney performance on the Polly D side. Ben, play my music, baby. <laughs> um, there we go. This is DJ Tiesto. You guys have nice. heard, right? Of mm-hmm. course. All right, of course. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, they, they set it up. I was so excited to see Polly at this as he called it, the Coliseum, right? Mm-hmm. It's like the, the it's like the Super Bowl of music, and and he's coming out. And it's all exciting. He's about to go up, and then like he gets to the stage and it's kind of empty, you know the stage is, and then obviously I have um, all these um, thousands of fans, and yet like when he's performing, there's no lights, there's no nothing. I mean it's, yeah. it, it, it just kind of faded away. Like well, obviously it's an s- amazing moment if you're in. Like I can't imagine being in front of those that many people. I would, you know, I I would freeze up, but. But again, I, I feel like, especially like DJ Tiesto, from what I'm used to, there's like lights everywhere and things yeah. happening. You know why I think that is? I feel as if it's because he doesn't have the budget for that type of... A lot of newer opening acts, when they're opening for a concert, do not have the crazy graphics and all the But if you had Britney, though, wouldn't he have a I bigger... understand that, but at the same time, you have to think of how... I mean, even if Polly makes like... A million or two, whatever, however much ben, a year. Ben, you can year, put that back on, baby. <laughs> however much a year Don't that stop he the makes, music. that's still not a big budget. Like, a million dollars is low budget for a movie. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So, I just think that he didn't have the budget for it yet in his career. Yeah. I, I agree, but, but it was just so, like, okay, there's him in the middle of the stage. You have the two screens of him, and then it's, like, pitch black. It's the black curtain, like, something, like... Like DJ Tiesto, we're about to hear it hit. There you go. But do you like, think that that was just for TV though? Like maybe they needed the oh, lighting. Oh, are you saying we're about to see it hit as in the lights or the music? No, just the music. Like, and this is you're, where you would see the cool lights. You're like, not going to hear the music because if you notice, like we were mentioning, I think it's a rights issue. They're not playing the music he's playing. Yeah. They're, they're Which looks awful because then it, it makes everyone dancing look like they're completely <laughs> offbeat. Right. <laughs> But, I mean, he got, like, this huge grand entrance. He had, like, a little elevator lift him up and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But what... The, he- sorry, can I just say yeah. that? I think the problem with Paulie though, is that as the type of DJ he is, is he plays everybody else's music. So that is why this happens. If he had his own original content, I'm sure he with MTV it would stuff. be on air and it would be okay. But the fact yeah. that he's playing, like, Tiesto and Avicii or whoever he's playing, it's not his own music. Yeah. But what I was saying um, in regards to what you mentioned, Phil, um, with the lights and stuff, do you think that that maybe was because it wouldn't correlate with the lights for the for filming and everything? No. Well, I don't think I so. Think I, I think Gabby's right on this one. And, you know, he did come up in that thing, but again, that's part of, that's built into any, yeah, you know, Brittany's any Yeah, Brittany's using that. that. That's yeah. why yeah. it's there. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Gabby does make a good point. I didn't I think, think of that way. That's what it is. Budget. Yeah. Nice. One day. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we see Paulie gets called back on stage after his set, and he gets a nice little lap well, dance. We should talk about the offers, though. Yes, you're right. Uh, oh, yeah. Good Thanks point. for the reminder. No, well, in terms of, you know, if we're talking about budget, I mean, now, now, you know, hopefully, you know, with three offers on the table. Negotiations. For, yeah. Three offers. He has offers from Palms, The Hard Rock, and Caesars. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, we know what he, cho- what he chose, but I wasn't aware that Caesars was, like, the place to be. Well, Caesars, in- really? What club is it? Is it Lava? Where? What's that Caesars? Do you guys know? I can't even remember. I like I, I don't know, but I they have the fountain. S- so they, they do have <laughs> clubs inside Caesars that are good. I know they have clubs, but I mean they're not like the most popular right now, are they? I'm gonna look it up to see because I always forget. I'm so bad with this. The only clubs I know in, that are in each hotel is I know that Trist. Hayes is in Aria. Yeah. I don't even know where Trist is. I like I, I know mean, them, Excess but I don't know. In, uh, yeah, Excess Encore. is in Encore, and then Marquis is in Cosmo. Those are the only yeah. places I know. Yeah, I mean, but, but they might have given him a really good deal. You know, I mean, if we're debating whether or not um, Caesars had a good club, then okay, then they might have beefed up the ante for mm-hmm. him. You know. Yeah, but do you think that he would also? I mean, granted, when it comes to money, obviously whoever's offering the best, but I would think that the popularity of the club would also be a big factor, you know, because in Vegas, it's like, it's just like LA, like clubs come and go. Um, the popularity one day it's the best and the next day it's the worst. Oh, I know. Pure. That's uh, a good one. Yeah. I mean, well, it's okay. I haven't been there in a while. Depends who the crowd is. Yeah. Actually, 
Ryan just had his birthday party up here in well, Vegas. Yeah. This one, like a few days ago. Nice. So he has three offers. He has to make his decision, what, soon. like very soon, right away. And he's a little perplexed with that. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add about the offers? No, that was it. <laughs> so then we see Polly get called back on stage after his set, and Britney Spears wants to give him a lap dance with another random guy on the lap dance podium. Yeah, that, that was funny. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just like, I don't mean to, to bang on Britney Spears because I love her, but that performance was just not cutting it for me. Like, I wish that she, I mean, she used to be such an amazing dancer. And so I wish that she would just like put that back into it. Like, I can't wait. I mean, if yeah. that ever comes back, like, I love that Britney. Well, I didn't see this last tour she did, but that we watched in tonight's episode, but I saw the tour before that and she fell off. I love yeah. her to death, but it's just like, no, yeah, because that whole tour was good. like she when she um, first started the tour, she was doing performances. She did one on GMA. She did one, I think, on the Today Show or whatever. She's not the same. Um, yeah. And it was very like her movements are just so different. Like, well, let me ask you this. Could she also be tired? I mean, if this is the last stop of the tour. I think something mentally and physically happened to her over the years because yeah. she is not the same person, not in interviews and not physically at all. She yeah. used to be a dancer. She's been doing this since 16. I mean, like. Look at all these other celebrities that are older and artists and are still going strong. Yeah. I mean, Her Bruce Springsteen are amazing. Used to be amazing. Yeah. Bruce Springsteen at um, whatever age he's he's at, um, you know, I know Kevin went and he was sliding across the stage and things like Rod that. Rod Stewart. Yeah. Hello. Rod Stewart's another one. He's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So Brittany, Lots of you got a few more years. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> a Poor lot more Brit, years. Brit. But I guess she has kids and. She's so Bruce been doesn't? through a lot. <laughs> no, I don't. I think it's more like been through a yeah, lot. Yeah, she's been through a lot. Yeah. I guess we'll just leave it at that. Right. Uh, well, anyway, just want to remind our listeners out there, comment on iTunes, give us ratings, let us know what you think. What did you think of this episode? How are you feeling about the show? Um, what did you think of everything? We love to hear your thoughts, and we love to um, keep in contact with you guys. So yes. They're vain. I'm not. I improved the show thanks to your comments. These guys just like the good ones. (laughs) No, we like the bad ones too because it's constructive criticism and we definitely take it to heart and try to do whatever it is that, you know. As long as it's constructive criticism, I don't like negativity exactly in like a violent way. If you're going to be constructive, great. Tell me all the negative things you want to tell me. Exactly. But. So after the concert, they did a little bit more celebrating of Jerry's birthday. They got chocolate wasted. And (laughs) uh, we see them all just super hungover the next morning. Polly's still in the clothes he wore the next, the last day. And it's all part of the plan that they're just, well, they go snorkeling and whatnot. But they come back and they just pass out. And they're so tired. And it's all part of Biggie's plan to pop the question. So it was kind of cute. Um, MJ seemed a little bitter at first when they were all passed out. Didn't she say, like, thanks for bailing or something as she as they left? Yeah, but that's good. That's yeah. Good. that's That was the plan. Yeah. To get her pissed off. But to get her, you know. I do have to say, when they were at dinner and Biggie actually told her, you know, it was part of the plan. Why did he have to tell her that? Just leave yeah. it at the proposal. You don't need to give the details. Like, no, I mean, the I thought that gave it. Fun. No, because what? I think that gave it away what he was leading up to. Well, you by had him mentioned saying, that. Well, you know, you mentioned that you thought that she already knew, like the whole yeah. time. Why I did thought you she think that? knew because the way he approached it. Because you know, when someone's about to propose to you, when he d- did it like that. Mm-hmm. How because, many times have you been proposed? <laughs> to? No, I mean, just if watching, if I didn't even know you wanted to propose, I could just tell by the way the conversations going. Girls analyze those things. And we're good communicators, so we realize what's going on. And I think right when he said, well, I kind of planned for the guys to not be here. You know, we've been together for four and a half years. His transition was a little off. It's just everything, yeah. It wasn't, (laughs) he was obviously nervous. But I feel like once you get to that point, like, yeah, the girl knows it's coming. Mm Mm-hmm. But but you want the build up beforehand. I mean, what wh- what do you want beforehand? Like, well, he shouldn't have said. I think that he planned to have the guys not come because why did he need to add that in? That just gives away what he's about to do. Uh, next if he time. didn't say that and he was just like, you know, I love you, and like she wouldn't know because she they say I love you to each other all the time. Mm-hmm. But I think she then knew what was about to happen. For my first marriage, because I'm probably gonna have several. 
<laughs> oh my god! I'm just gonna be like, yo, you need more deodorant. Will you marry me? <laughs> no, that's Phil. how it's gonna be. You know what that actually Phil, and reminds me of? She's gonna say no. <laughs> well, again, that's the buildup. So why are we hating on Biggie? If you do that, I'll never speak to you again. Why are we hating on I'll Biggie? Be so upset I'm with not you. hating on Biggie. I mean, I think that it was obviously the perfect setting for proposal. Like the first question that people ask when someone gets proposed is how did it happen? Where were you? So for her to be able to say Puerto Rico and we, you know, we set up a dinner on the beach, blah, blah. But I agree with Gabby in a way, like I'm sure she had a hunch, you know, he was very adamant that she come out to Puerto Rico and he's been traveling all this time, you know? And I think maybe she probably was thrown off. You know, like I said, she had a hunch, but she probably didn't expect it to happen when it did, especially because of the, fact that she was initially expecting to go to that dinner with all the boys they had the concert like they seemed to have a very packed schedule and so maybe like she was caught off guard that it happened at that second but i'm sure throughout the trip it was a something that she was hoping for since she's been cutting out rings in newspapers and b something that she kind of had a feeling you know because when you get to that point in your relationship like every romantic setting or every trip that you go on you're kind of in the back of your head like well maybe it'll happen here or maybe it'll happen there but um they're cute and i'm happy to see like them together for once and not like being mad at each other or her she being annoyed she yeah, we were does all saying that. Yeah. she's a very naturally pretty girl she's so pretty and you know she's so in shape like when we saw her on the boat, boat in her bathing suit like she's she's hot and she's not like you're like Snooky or something who just has like cakes of makeup on like she's very beautiful I yeah thought she was really don't pretty. hate on Snooky because speaking of Snooky we will be doing the Snooky and Jay Wow show we Holler. will be so and don't uh, hate on me because I plug that because I know you guys get a little bummed when we do plugs but hey no, but I'm that's just a, letting that's you a know plug that's to keep a, tuned in show, yeah that's in about two weeks guys season premiere so watch out for that yes so um I guess as if this is a huge cliffhanger, she they don't show us what her answer is. So I wonder, is she going to say yes or is she going to say no? Were those tears of joy or tears of, oh, my God, I have to say no to this? Yeah, like you're, you just ruined my life. I mean, if she <laughs> says no, then everything she's been doing in the, you know, the past has just been ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, and everyone, the public would hate her. I know. I feel like there would be some definite backlash with that yeah (laughs) i like her right now so i just hope she says yes yeah i'm glad that we got to see like a different side of her this episode agreed the happy side yeah exactly because even in the beginning (laughs) of the episode she was being short on the phone a little bit before she got there we were actually saying when we were watching this how funny it was that when he was like Mary Jane, I want you to come out for the the concert night. Mm-hmm. And she was like, sure. Like, it was yeah. so easy. But then that episode prior, it was like, well, I don't know if I can get off. And I yeah. don't know. I might and not be able to make it. I need to exactly. get my shift covered. Is that girl, I mean, is, is that just, and I hate this. I hate this about you girls. I really do. <laughs> you is girls, that, you can't just Don't gentle. that girls, love everybody. I'm going to lump all the girls together. Is it just you guys putting us through this stupid test of, like, you got to fight for my hand? And, like, do you really want... I mean, no, I really don't want you there. That's why I'm asking you to be there. Like, come on. I think on. she's just annoyed. I mean, she hasn't seen her boyfriend. He's been all over the place, and she's alone. And I know personally, when I get annoyed, like I don't want to be bothered. And I definitely can be short with people. And so, you therefore, know. so the solution is you haven't seen your boyfriend in a while, and he's asking you to spend time with him. So you're gonna say no to him because you're pissed off. She's stubborn. Like, great solution, yeah. women. She's stubborn. She's stubborn. It's Come her on. Personality. But that's why New Yorkers are such like hard asses because they're stubborn and they do what they want. Yeah. <laughs> that's just what it is. It's it is what it is, Phil. Yeah. Well, you women. Deal with us women. Maybe. Anyway, let's cut to a commercial break and then we have some news and gossip. Hey guys, so what do you get when three real single ladies are super fans of VH1 single ladies? Well, you get the after show on AfterBuzz TV. I'm Lauren Turner. I'm Spicy Mighty. Bring you back fire. And I'm Fallon Mercedes. And we're single ladies, so make sure you watch us on AfterBuzz TV. We're all the single, single, single ladies. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. Hey guys, this is the AfterBuzz TV crew for The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Woo! Don't forget to tune in every Monday night at 8 p.m to see Adrian Vero, Deanna Vaughn, Susan Hahn, Giselle Ugardi. Buzz you later! After Buzz TV, what do you want to buzz about? 
Where's, Where's Phil? Phil? <laughs> Phil will BRB. But um, in the meantime, we're going to get to some news and gossip. <laughs> After Buzz TV News. I went streaking. Just in time. Yeah, Phil had one of his guy uh, moments. He felt the need streak. to take his clothes off. <laughs> He's been drinking. Sorry, guys. Well, Pauly D is hoping to give Bethany Frankel a run for her money. The Jersey Store DJ is introducing Remix as the next pregame beverage. And joining the ranks of Pauly's acronym-filled vocab, he wants to dub the premixed vodka concoction as RTD, as in ready to drink. Polly hopes to recreate the success of Bethany Frankel's Skinny Girl cocktail brand. And in fact, he has teamed up with co-founder of Skinny Girl, David Canbar. Remix is expected to hit stores this month. And according to Polly, this drink is symbolic of his lifestyle. He says, quote, I'm mixing drinks and mixing records. Remix describes my life and what I'm passionate about. He's ready about. to drink? <clears throat> yeah. That that's just, a drink describes your life. That's, Whoever is branding him is genius. Yeah, I mean, ready to drink. I don't have to pour my soda into my well, vodka. I mean, let come me just on. tell you this: the ready to drink thing was not original because everyone uses the term ready to serve for alcohol. Yeah. So they were just trying to come up with a different last word so yeah. that they can make it their own. But that's I mean, how did. many, like, didn't Ronnie have a, a pregame drink that he wanted to come uh, out the, with? Was it the, the Ron watermelon? Ron Juice. Ron Ron yeah, Juice. Yeah, the Ron like Ron watermelon Juice, watermelon stuff. slushy yeah. vodka or something like that. I mean, hey, if that's what your life, if that's what you're passionate about, then I guess so be it. <laughs> uh, Jersey Shore is back in action. Yes, all of KWOW's favorite little guidos and guidettes. Polly, Mike, Vinny, Ronnie, Sammy, JWOW, Dina, and yes, even Preggers Snooky moved back into their summer rental last week to begin filming season six of Jersey Shore. Wait. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Why? What were no, you I was going to say, say excited. The season finale of Jersey Shore is... Them rushing Snooky to the hospital. Exactly, right? <laughs> That's gonna my be on water par. broke. <laughs> oh my. Wait, well, but they didn't even finish filming it yet. No, but no, that's they what I'm haven't. saying. They just started, but he's saying the finale is gonna be her. They that's planned gonna, it out. That's gonna be on par with, you know, her. Right when around, is she due again? I don't know. Like, she was three months, I guess, like two months ago or something. So we are so at she's five probably months. Like There's five. nine months for pregnancy, no? Yeah, but they don't. They, um,. Those seasons, the filming isn't that long. Yeah, but the the season's probably going to premiere right after this the Snooki J Wow show. Yeah, well, probably Snooki mid-summer. says that she won't be living in the house, but will be living nearby during filming to avoid the alcohol and the hot tub. Really? <laughs> yes. What is her and Gianni get like a beach house I next know. door? I know. I love how she has to avoid the hot tub. That's, That's funny. funny. I mean, I know you're not supposed to go in hot tubs. Would it be pregnant. funny? Like yeah. she has to come over for food rations? I know. She <laughs> she can't cook for herself. She's like, feed me. I need pickles. Um, and actually, it has been announced that it is officially the final season of Jersey Shore as well. No, Apparently, I know. I just got chills. That's so sad. And actually the cast was, they broke, the executive producers broke the news to the cast once they moved in. They're like, this is going to be the final season and you guys need to make it count. No one's going to, after this season, people are going to remember you for this season, not the first season. So it's yeah. kind of like a lot of pressure to make sure that this season goes out with a bang. So who knows? Maybe Snooki's delivery will be the, the season, finale. season finale. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it, it, it's so, I mean, we'll definitely talk about this when we actually do the Jersey Shore, but such a weird, like, milestone. You yeah. know? I mean, it's a, it's been three years of our lives, four years maybe. Yeah. And, and it's, it's been a while. coming to an end. Yeah. And I mean, it's one of those things like when you watch a show like this from the very beginning and you see all of them grow in the way they have, like as big as they've become with Polly, you know, as a renowned DJ now, you know, and that and I've been doing this show since season two. Yeah. The after show, like that's, yeah. you know, so like my cerebral thinking about all of this has just been like double that. Yeah. You, and you all, you relate working in Afterbuds to Jersey Shore. I know, right? <laughs> it's like Jersey Shore Day. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> Jersey Day. That was your your start at your beginnings. Exactly. <laughs> oh, roots has always will have a place in my heart. I will. I will. <laughs> Uh, so remember a few weeks ago when I told you guys that the situation and his family had teamed up with Wizard World to create a comic book series? Well, 
We got a picture. The first image has just been released. Are you ready for this? Can you see ben, can we get a drum roll? <laughs> Go to the uh, the I comedy have, like, soundboard. Notes on the back, no worries. That's <laughs> fun. Bam! This wow. is a little intense for me. There we go. I, I can still give you a drum roll. Can I show want. it to the camera? Yeah, let's get let's get let's a get delayed a drum in. roll. Yeah. There we go. Boom. <laughs> nice. I mean That was one drum roll per ab. What do you guys think of this? This is like insane. How could any like real comic book fan take that, this seriously? No, but that looks like a Duke of Hazard mixed with <laughs> No, I'm serious. That looks like a cartoon Olivia Wilde. Okay, what, yeah. what is a comic book? A cartoon? Well, yeah, I mean, it looks exactly like Olivia Wilde. That's... Let's go to Benjineer in the booth. Ben, you, you read comic books, right? Nope. <laughs> but you read The Walking Dead. For the show. Okay. <laughs> ben, what are you into? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Just after buzz. By the and... way, Ben is our newest... Uh, we call him Benjineer because Ronnie... Our former engineer, he's moving off to New York. Ronnie Jr. Media, we love you. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Living but the life. Ben, welcome, Ben Jr. Woo! Give a, give yourself Woo! an applause. Woo! <laughs> Round of applause. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, that's all we have for today's After Buzz TV news and gossip. Predictions. Predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. predictions. So, like I said, they left us hanging a little bit with MJ's answer, obviously. And we left ourselves hanging. Yeah, I'm just like, I cannot wait until next week to see what she says. Well, we also missed two minutes of the end of the episode. Yeah. No, we the, missed, like... Well, the teaser for the... the we missed, like, five time. seconds of the teaser. But that was going to be, like, the best part of yeah, the teaser. Yeah, because it was what, his soundbite, Biggie's soundbite. Yeah, well, we know it's the season finale. Yes. Oh, so. do we know that? Well, yeah. Yeah, then, it is. <laughs> oh, well, I guess the proposal's over. I mean, and the no, concert's and the, over. So well, that else? and Sno and Snooki and Jay Wow begins. Oh and, yeah, in two and, weeks. Yeah, and then awkward, which we will do show. both. We're gonna do both. I love awkward. Um, really? Is it good? It's so good. But it's you know I, I know when we first started we didn't kind of know the characters and now we've really come a long way. I mean we personally know them yes, but <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you just have to plug that. <laughs> just throw yeah, that in there. We personally know them. We just party and drink no, but together. I, I think even even as a, as a viewer you know it 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 almost sucks. That, you know we've said it so many times. It's a half an hour show and and I really wish we could spend a, even if it was. 45 minutes? 40 minutes. I'll take 40, <laughs> I'll take 40 minutes. And then just 15 minutes of commercials after that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I, I definitely have grown to love the show. I know in the beginning of the season we were talking about how everything was just going so fast and we couldn't get to know anyone, but they've come a long way. You guys, <coughs> sorry, J-Rock was not in this episode at all. In the season. I We saw like, him like, barely. like oh. twice. I Which mean, is weird that he's in, like, the promotional stuff and everything. I know. He's just a pretty face. Yeah. So any predictions for next week other than MJ? Um, MJ says yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the guys tell um, what? They kind of try to discuss what their next year is going to be like with Biggie getting married and everything. Yeah. And how that's going to affect the group. And they, they are coming up on the new year. Yeah. You know, so... Um, so it's going to be a big decision. Uh, I'm sure Biggie's going to be torn. Obviously, um, Polly's torn. Okay, what do I go with? You know. Um, do you think MJ will be <coughs> become part of the entourage? Maybe. Maybe she gets a role as like think social she wants director that? too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think she should. Maybe she'll be the social media director. <laughs> That's possible. I could see that. I mean, if she's cool. I mean, you know, if, if Ryan quote unquote doesn't get paid by Polly and yet he's part of the crew and part of the whole scam, then. You know, let her be part of it. As long as she's supportive, then why not? You think she wants that, though? I feel like she would get kind of sick jealous. of those guys. Yeah, well, jealous of all the parts. I mean, even tonight, I think I had mentioned during Jerry's party, she was kind of just, like, in the corner kind of observing. Like, she doesn't seem like the type that's just like, yeah, buddy, let's, you know. But I think she was fine with that. Yeah, but, I mean, after a while, is that does that is that going to get old for her? But, well, Biggie, will, you know, gives her a lot of attention, even yeah. though he's working, I feel like. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think she's well taken care of. Well, it'll be interesting to see how the season ends. It will be quite interesting. Well. We should probably plug ourselves and then hit some outro music. Yep, that's what we got for today. Tweet us. Let us know what you thought of tonight's episode. Tweet at me at I am Jessica King. 
What about you guys? Where can we find you? You can tweet me at Gabrielle underscore Loren, and my Facebook is Gabrielle Loren with the number one. Well, you can tweet me at, uh, at Undergaro. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> because that's who I'm filling in for, and of course, at AfterBuzz TV. <laughs> All right, Undergaro. You did such a good job today. Yeah, thanks for being here. <laughs> no problem. Always a pleasure. As you are every week. Always a pleasure. <laughs> you do look different, however, I have to say. Yeah, something's changed, but I can't quite put my finger on it. I'm excited for the new things. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> All righty. Well, we'll see you guys next week. And tell a buddy. From Bing.com, executive TV producers exclusive. Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later, bitches! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.